Welcome! So, new week, new project. Um, today we will do something different. Uh, last time we finished up this little like shortcut keyword, uh, which I'm actually using today to switch my scenes. So that's like project success, I guess. Ironic. Um, and yeah, today let's look at this beautiful Android. Um, so basically what we'll do in the next weeks, I think this will keep us busy for, for quite some time. Getting notification and streaming, nice. <laughs> um, this will keep us busy for, for quite some time. Hi Colly, hi Alex. Um, so basically what we'll do today is, um, or like what we'll do in gen general, it's sort of like, the, uh, like that. We will convert this into Ender switch wire or like Voron switch wire, Ender wire, however you want to call it. Um, why is this possible? Um, basically, Switchwire is a core Z Z Y no X Y core X Z X. I, I don't get it straight. Uh, so basically, it's a core X Y, but they flip upside down. So basically, you will still have the bat slinger uh, motion here, um, but the X and the Z axis basically will have a core layout. Uh, so basically, we will have two motors uh, left and right basically here. And then the core X, Y flipped upwards basically goes along this uh, this loop here, basically. Um, so basically what we will do is basically we'll keep the Ender frame basically as is, um, but we will re replace the kinematics. Core X, Z, thank you. Um, so basically what this means is uh, we can reuse the frame. Um, the original switch wire has a slightly bigger bed um, because it's based on the Prusa Mark III bed. Um, so basically, it's a bit of a shame because I'm not a big fan of this ender bed here. Um, like we will tear down this entire thing here uh, and I can uh, talk a bit about the history of this printer. It's like, this is my first printer. <laughs> there's some, there's a lot of stories behind that. Um, but yeah, basically I really hate this bat and I would love to have the, the bigger Prusa Mark III bat. Not because of the size, but because I think it's a way better quality bat most likely. Um, but yeah, we will keep the frame, we will keep the bat basically. Um, I'll try to get rid of the glass bat here. Um, but the aluminium plate we will keep. Um, we will keep uh, one of those two fans. <laughs> Maybe let's, let's bring it a little bit closer. Uh, this is like a custom hotend I, I made. Why is it so dark? Let me give you a little bit more brightness. So we'll keep one of those fans. This is a custom um, fan shot. Uh, I'm no clue where I got this from years ago, but it's also not really good. So this will be not something I miss. But these are the two original Creality fans. One of them comes from the original Creality hotend and one was in the controller box, which was like somewhere down there. Um, so one of them will be kept and we will move it into the, our stealth burner. We will keep the BL touch. Um, my goal was basically to reuse as much as possible um, and the BL touch I have, so I'll just keep using it as a, as a pro. And we will keep using, let me quickly unplug that. Yeah, this is like a complete hack job here. We will keep using the micro Swiss hotend. Um, it is an all metal hotend, so technically it should be all fine. Um, but I think it won't be like the highest performance hotend. But I think this like was quite a common upgrade that people did. Same for the PL touch. So I'm trying to make this as a little bit of like a tutorial style stream. So how do you convert your Ender to a switch wire? Um, and I think there's like quite a common setup for Ender 3s uh, of this vintage. Like I think like newer Ender models have a little bit different setups, but like for this like 20, what is it? 2019, 2018 Ender 3, um, that's a very common setup, I think. Yeah, so yeah, you also see here that's the original, everyone wants to focus. It's the original Creality fan here. Yeah, and this little like uh, slat here, um, this printer printed all the parts for my V0. And I had massive problems with the PLA curling. And in the end I figured out that like, there was like, when I put my hand here, there was like airflow on my fingers on the back. Uh, so basically the, the hot end fan, the air of the, the hot end fan basically was pushing onto the build plate and everything was curling up in the back. 
Uh, so I added this little like shield here and it just slides in between the like in the first rip of the of the heatsink. Uh, and that prevents this air from like, spilling all over the place. Uh, and that was like how I printed AVS on this. Uh, technically would have worked open air, I think, but uh, I put it also in a pack shift <laughs> enclosure. Um, but yeah, so that's parts we will keep here from the hot end. Um, if we move a little bit, it's actually still on. I just want to see that's turning on, but I'll just pull the plug quickly. Yeah, uh, as you see here in the close up, <laughs> um, there are some IKEA lights. I uh, will also try to move them over to the to the switch wire. Uh, super simple LED bars, no RGB, but yeah, so light, light is light. So on the back, we will reuse the motors. Um, this is the Titan extruder, which will definitely go out. Uh, like it's uh, uh, not an original one; it's like like a fake one. I really don't like it. Uh, the motors, um, I put those heat sinks on them. I don't know why, I can't remember, but this will be interesting to get off because they're glued. So that will be fun. <laughs> so it's like those two motors have it, the X motor and the extruder motor. Um, yeah, we will also reuse the X motor, of course. We reuse the Z motor here. Um, the lead screw, of course, will go. Uh, we will be fully belted. Um, the... I wonder, like, it's... Too dark or it's too bright. There's no middle right now. Um, the X mo uh, E stepper will also uh, stay. Um, then the heated bed, of course, we said will stay. Then I did or have this um, rear electronic bay, uh, which I think also like a lot of people did. Like mine is a bit different than other people because I added this uh, fan here on top to cool everything. Um, and this will also stay. Actually, that's a 80 millimeter fan, but uh, one centimeter tall. We will keep this and this will go to the um, power supply. Um, yeah, then this just keep moving around. <laughs> uh, um, that's the one that probably would get the most hot. Uh, you mean the motor or the... Oh, sorry, I missed your message before. Heatsink on the Y motor. Um, yeah, it didn't work um, because, I mean, I have it and I tried to install it. So basically the problem was that the screw here, like you see it, I'm kind of like, you may be see it if I add a little bit more light. So basically uh, this would not have worked because like it's barely uh, clearing that motor here, the screw. Uh, that's why this one doesn't have a heatsink. Uh, now I'm glad that it doesn't have a heatsink um, because now I don't have to pull off. <laughs> so, less work for me, which is amazing. Um, so yeah, um, if we move around a bit more... Uh, we also have a custom fan here on the power supply. Um, this one will be basically replaced with the controller fan back here. Um, but we will keep basically, or like we make a new custom um, housing here. Like this one is open, it's like a mesh design. Um, it's really cool like because basically the fan barely turns on and if it turns on it's, it's absolutely silent. Like this fan and that fan and also this fan here um, are super silent which is great. Uh, and yeah it turns on you don't hear it and the power supply fan on the original end was like the loudest part of the entire printer. It was completely insane. So that's why I replaced it. Um, as a side note, those are uh, noise blocker black silent pro fans, and I have the same one in my <laughs> in my gaming PC. So my entire, all my fans are are this this model basically. Cool. Um, yeah. So that's kind of like the end. Let's quickly look into the electronics as well. I think that would be interesting as well. Um. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very great, very well prepared today. This. Let's quickly take a peek inside. There's a lot of stuff going on here. And I actually rebuilt the entire electronics uh, before starting the Voron parts because the printer was so incredibly unreliable that I yeah, just want to take time and, and fix 
couple things before I was, uh, I was printing like a lot of stuff for the War on Zero. Um, it's a bit difficult here to get it off with the fan. Um, because you see like it's colliding with the motor. <laughs> There's a very particular order to get this off. So basically, unplug the fan and you slide out the stuff. You have to unplug the, the display. <laughs> and then you can continue sliding stuff out very carefully. Yeah. This is uh, a uh, PLA in enclosure. <laughs> works incredibly well and let's unplug the motor like it's really not nice to work on that here we go and now i think this cable is yeah here you go and then you can hmm. it's the first time i open it after printing an enclosure and it's definitely not happy <laughs> they used to be straight uh, also i found a way to make a macro pad with just the stuff i have in my house i'm using a pro micro and a, yeah that's cool that's a very cool idea i mean in the end it's really really simple right it's just buttons and a microcontroller i just went with that design um but yeah um, cables too short i can't show it but yeah technically it's like super super simple right like it's just a microcontroller that acts as a keyboard also, I'm just directly wiring the switch, so I'm limited to 18. Oh, okay, so you don't do the, the table cross thing setup. Yeah, so basically if you have like a keyboard um, for the other people that know not, not to know, um, if you have buttons, you link them basically as a grid. And then if two connections are basically active, then you know which switch is clicked uh, or pressed. And then you can like have way more switches than you have connections. I think like for a macro path, like having 18 is not a big deal like I have 12 and it's more than I need mm, yeah so let's just quickly check here uh what do we have here we have we have a raspberry pi zero here um that is a little bit elevated so all the cables are are below um this one will be replaced with a pi four um I can explain later why but it's not up to the top <laughs> and then this is just a super standard cable um, which is micro USB to micro USB in this very odd case because it comes from the Raspberry Pi Zero and goes into the SKR Mini E3. Um, so we have the SKR Mini E3 here which we will keep as a controller board of course. Um, so this will later drive our switch wire. At the moment we are running Marlin here but we will have um, of course Clipper then for the switch wire. Um, yeah, nothing too special here. So we have to be all touch wired. Um, this cable here is the fan for on top. Uh, I'm just grabbing five volts here. So the fan was just running at five volts, but it's plenty enough to cool the electronics here. Um, yeah, so it's pretty standard. On the other side, it's maybe a little bit more interesting. Um, it's a lot of cables. So I, when I rebuilt the electronics recently, I started using those Vago uh, terminals here which made wiring way better like it's way easier um so basically we have the 24 volt coming in uh which then goes on the so basically just the color scheme a uh, red is 24 volts i went yellow is uh five volts and black is brown uh so basically the 24 volts comes in and the 24 positive is basically going through this relay here uh, so this relay turns on the main board and the printer electronics, basically. The Raspberry Pi is fed from one of the back converters here. The Raspberry Pi is always on, powered by the main PSU. And then we have two back converters here. Uh, one powers the Raspberry Pi and one powers the relay. The reason is both run on 5 volts, um, but when the relay switches, um, there's a drop in the voltage uh, and the Raspberry Pi always complains. So I just have two back converters. So when the relay um, turns on, then basically the, the, the voltage drop is isolated. Um, then here in the corner, we have two MOSFETs. Uh, one of the MOSFETs is controlling the IKEA lights, and the other MOSFET uh, was actually controlling the Nevermore um, when I was printing my Voron parts. Um, those two we will not need uh, in the new uh, build, 
can later explain why. <laughs> Same reason why we don't need the Vesper anymore. So those will be replaced. The relay we will keep and the two back converters we will also keep. One back converter again powering the Raspberry and one back converter powering the relay. So yeah, that's the electronics. Um, so I think it's like, I guess a little bit more fancy than the average Ender, but it's, I think a lot of very, very, very common mods that many people did uh, to those Enders. Like it's not super special in that regard. Um, so that's basically our starting point. Then um, I have a lot of parts here and often the description of the screen, uh, screen, <laughs> the description of the screen, um, you will see my entire part list that I ordered. Um, and I think total cost that I paid for all the parts we need to, to upgrade that um, was 350-ish uh, euros. Um, with the caveat that we will have two, extru uh, two extruders on this machine. Oops. Down. So we will have two extruders. Um, that's also why we don't. We will need to upgrade the Raspberry um, because we will have two main boards. Um, this is our project box here. Um, you have a ton of more stuff on your ender than me. <laughs> Yeah, like, it's, 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 that's what I meant, like, it's more on the, on the fancy side of Ender, but it's still, like, not completely out there. Like, I saw people having way more things on their Ender. Um, I think it's, like, common mods, but I just have all the common mods. Um, so, yeah, so we'll have two extruders, um, which will be two of the Voron M4 extruders. And this means we will need two main boards. Um, I'm in the lucky situation that I actually have multiple of those SKR mini boards. Um, this one is the uh, version 2. The version 3 is in the printer. Um, this one has a defect. Um, and basically the, the problem is that the fan 0 and the fan 1, they're both not working anymore. So this board doesn't have fans, but the rest of the things work perfectly fine. Um, so basically the V3 board that's currently in the Ender will drive the printer, more or less, and then this main board will drive the second extruder. Um, the beautiful thing is with, with Clipper, you can have multiple main boards. You don't even have to have be the same main board. Um, so we can have just two of those SKR Mini E3s, which I have. So my, my goal is really to like reuse what I have as much as possible. So we just use one of the stepper drivers to drive the extruder. The other beautiful thing is that this board, of course, has broken fans but it still has two MOSFETs uh, namely for the heated bed and for the hot end. So yes they are meant for the heated bed and the hot end but we can use them to control the LEDs, the LED lights. Uh, not the RGB ones but like the, the, the LED strips, the, the IKEA ones I have. So we can use it to turn stuff like that on and off. Technically we can also connect the Nevermore or something like that on one of those and just drive it as a PVM fan. That's, of course, also possible. Um, then what also is nice, we have another um, ne uh, NeoPixel port here. So I, I, we will add RGB. <laughs> uh, so we can drive RGB NeoPixels from this main board and from the other main board. So we have double the LEDs or the NeoPixels, which is amazing. Um, yeah, so that's, I mean, it's a pretty standard main board. Um, I already, as a test fit, added a mount here, and that brings us to those parts here. Um, these are um, DIN rails. You might have seen them before, but basically they allow us um, to mount stuff. So it's very simple, like you just basically flip it on, and now it's, it's secure. Um, and they will basically be glued to the deck panel and then all our electronics go on those on those rails uh, It's just easier to do that way because right now I'm not 100% sure how we arrange electronics and what exactly we will need in the end uh, So having those rails is just more flexible So thin rails um, Yeah, let's get the big stuff out Then we of course need linear rails um, I'm not sure about the make of those linear rails. Uh, it's, I linked the exact model in the description. 
Uh, oh yeah, it's RDBB. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's RDBB. <laughs> uh, these are the ones from the Switchwire bomb. So that's the, or from the from the buying guide of Switchwire. Um, so whenever I needed parts, I tried to get the ones that the Warren team recommends for Switchwire. Um, so these are the ones that were recommended, and they are, they are really nice. Um, like they're super smooth. Um, they are very consistent between them. Like they're really nice rails. Um, I'm very, very happy with them so far. Um, they are MGN12, so they're quite big, <laughs> especially coming like from the MGN9 rails from the V0, they are massive. Uh, one difference is uh, compared to the regular switch wire, we have five. The regular switch wire um, has exactly the same rails, but only four. Um, the reason is that for us, we will have two rails on the Y axis, so left and right. If the Y axis and the bed goes on top, the normal switch wire or like the bomb switch wire, however you want to call it, has one rail on top and then the bed goes on top of that. So there's a little bit of a difference there. Um, that's basically because we have different bed, um, the mounting of the bed is different. So um, I did clean them, but I did not yet grease them. Um, so I removed the transport oil, uh, but we will still need to grease them. Um, yeah, main board we talked about, we have two, one in the ender at the moment and this one. Then, I mean, we have zip ties. I'm not sure what they are doing in here, but we have zip ties. Um, then we have one fan. Um, that's a Zunon 20, uh, 5015 blower fan, uh, which we will need for our stealth burner. So that goes into our stealth burner. Then let's check out the Creality box. <laughs> Um, because I want to have two extruders and I want to reuse the extruder motor on the ender, um, I just ordered the exact replacement part for the Creality ender, uh, which will use as an extruder motor on the on the switch wire. Uh, it's a bit odd. I think I'm the only person who orders like Creality motors for their Voron build. Um, but A, it's incredibly cheap. Like this motor is 10 euros. Um, and then at least like my thinking was I have the same on both sides. The alternative would have been to order, I mean, I want to have the same motors, just have the extruders consistent. Um, but then basically if I wouldn't have wanted to order another Creality one, I would have needed to buy two different ones. Um, and if you look at like LDO motors or something, like you're easily paying like three or four times the price of this one. And in the end, I think it will do the trick. So this should be, should be fine. Um, yeah, some random Wagos. Um, I think we will need them to connect the bed um, because the bed cable is quite short. And I saw on Thief's stream that he used Wagos and I really liked the idea. And I'm in big love of, with, with Wagos at the moment, so we have some more Wagos. Um, this is one of the M4 extruder kits, so there should be two of them somewhere. Yeah, there's a second one somewhere. Uh, we will find it eventually. So there are two, two of those kits. Um, these are the Blue Rolls uh, M4 kits. Uh, again, like I linked everything in the description. Not affiliate links, but still like, I think it's nice if somebody wants to do the same. Um, this one is a stealth burner kit. Uh, I think it's again the Blue Rolls. Um, so we have a couple of connectors to crimp, screws, heat set inserts. So yeah, um, for all those like assembly groups, I try to buy the kits uh, because otherwise, yeah, kind of going crazy. Um, I more or less accidentally ordered two of those, but you only need one. Um, the original switch wire or like the bomb switch wire comes with a key bag, uh, which basically is used to hold the, um, the X axis. Um, because basically we have this belted setup. As soon as you take the power away from the printer, the, the Z axis will just crash down basically. Um, and this one is basically counterweight. So it's going over the top and then holds the, the, the axis. Um, technically for the end wire, you could have also used the key bag, but the key bags are quite expensive. And I tried to keep costs low in this build in general. Uh, so key bag would have been like 30 euros, which would have been like 10% of the overall cost of this upgrade. Um, this one is an alternative found online on GitHub. Um, also link in the description because we need some extra um, printed part here. And this was two euros. So 
30 versus 2 and it's doing the same job. So yeah, that was the easy one to, to, to swap out. Um, then we have chains. Um, this is also a kit, uh, that's a switch wire kit. <laughs> um, they should work. Um, it's, I can't remember which kit it is, but um, yeah. Then let's do this later. Um, oh yeah, this one is the tool head PCBs for the self burner. Uh, I cheaped out and saved like three euros and got the unsoldered ones. Uh, so we have to solder that. I think after soldering the the PCB of the macro keypad, this will be like a walk in the park. So that should be fine. Empty bag. Then we have some pulleys, which we will need for our belt setup. Let's also put it out. What else do we have? Yeah, then we have bearings uh, for our belts. I'm actually curious whether they are the same that are currently on the Ender. I'm, I wasn't sure, so I just ordered them anyways, but we can quickly compare them. So these are... Uh, I think 20 in total. Uh, a couple of bone tubes. Um, this will be connecting the two M4 extruders with our self burner hot end. Uh, so we will not have direct drive, we will have bone extruder in case it wasn't clear yet. Um, collets to connect the bone tubes. Self burner LEDs. Then we have the feet. These are like rubber feet that go under the printer. The same that would also go on the 2.4. I think also the Trident is using those. Um, yeah, we have our gates belt, of course. They are gates. I, ch I checked the print. <laughs> um, then we have cables. Um, I got PTFE cables. Um, I got in total 15 meters, I think, of uh, 20 gauge wire, and I got 5 meter of 18 gauge wire, which we'll use for the hot end. And I got, um, I'm not sure where it is, but I also got, maybe, maybe it's this one, I'm not sure if it's red, I thought it got black, but I also got some 28 gauge wire just like for general, like, uh, things we need to wire, like like switches and sensors, whatever. I just want to have some, something small there. Um, then, yeah, these are silicon spacers. Um, they will replace the bed spring, so that's four silicon spacers. Not necessary, but it's like two euros or something, so I was like, whatever. Oh, there's the second uh, M4 extruder kit. Then USB cable for the controller board. Um, oh yeah, the, the linear rails came with extra balls, which I found really nice. So in case you lose some balls of your linear bearings, you can uh, repopulate them, which is really nice. Um, that's some random trash, I guess. We don't need that. Like, uh, that's a cable sleeve that's from the LDO V0. Uh, I just threw it in here. Maybe we need it. Um, yeah, this one is not needed, but that's another uh, SKR Mini E3. Just don't ask why I have three of them. Uh, and that's the original Creality board, which we will not need um, because we have so many SKRs. But I mean, technically, if you would have upgraded your Ender to SKR Mini at some point and you still have the original Ender board and you want to have the dual extruder, technically you can use the uh, Creality board to drive two extruders. So that's also possible. Um, yeah, that's all there is, except for this bag. And this bag is the most important bag of them all, because it has all the fasteners we need. Um, I was a little bit confused that this exists. Um, this is the Blue Rolls Ender 3 to Switchwire kit, uh, or hardware kit, I, I should say. And they claim it has all the fasteners we have to, to make this conversion happen. I am skeptical. Uh, I fully expect that we will not have everything we need and we will run out of something at some point um, or something's completely missing from this kit. Um, but there is no bomb for the switchwire to Android conversion and uh, I wasn't really in a mood going through fusion and counting screws um, and then counting what I had in the Ender because I will also take apart the Ender, right? So we will get more fasteners from that as well. So I fully trust that these people did that, and this is all we need. Um, in case we are missing stuff, and this will happen, I'm 1000% sure of that, 
we will just resell it. Like I have some fastness here. Um, not exactly what we need most likely, but we can repurpose it. And if shit hits the fan, worst case, uh, I have a hardware store close to me so I can buy something. Um, yeah, so these are all the parts we have. Let me just throw it back into this box. <laughs> just want to quickly show everything. And I'm really excited to start working on this. Like I was collecting parts for this build for like two months, I think. And I was sitting there and I was like busy with other stuff, but I really wanted to start with this one. Okay, this is our magic box. Let me put that aside. And then before we start this sampling stuff, Let's also quickly peek into this box. Let's start from the top. Um, so um, these are all the printed parts, I should say. So here we have all the electronics uh, stuff. Uh, like you see, I already uh, kind of went ahead and created some custom fittings for stuff. We will see, still need to like sew it up and everything, um, but this goes on the DIN rail. And these are the two back converters we will need. So. I kind of like we will not reuse the ones in the end at the moment. We will just use new ones and I recycle them later. But basically that's input on one side and then we have two outputs just as a JST. I'll just glue them in here. But yeah, that's one. Um, this one is the relay, uh, same deal. Uh, just goes onto the JST, uh, onto, onto the thin rail. Um, this one is the same relay as we have there. Only difference is this one has a uh, cover, so I want to use this one. Um, yeah, and then this one is the mount for the pie. Same deal. Uh, I really like those like thin clips with the springs, like this printed spring. Really nice. Um, they are a tad loose for me, uh, but I think that has to do with my thin rails being a little bit too short. And I printed this in ABS. It's recommended to print it in PTG because it's more springy then. Um, but I added those rubber stops basically to add friction to it and yeah, that's perfectly working. So the pie goes on here, um, got the other SKR mount and then some other bits and pieces we will need. Cool, that's that. Uh, then yeah, we have tons and tons of printed parts. So we have the stealth burner for the micro swiss which I'm very happy that already exists, so that will be easy. What we will need to do though, uh, is we will need to design a Y tool head splitter thingy in, in Fusion, um, because we have two Bowden tubes coming in and that only exists for the afterburner. Technically you could use that, like the afterburner part on the stealth burner, but yeah, let's make it pretty. Uh, yeah, that's like tons and tons of parts, like we don't have to go through all of that, I guess. So the main color is black. Um, again, I want to keep cost low, so I just reused the black ABS I had. Um, these are the M4 extruders. And the accent color that we will go for is yellow, or this, it's called light, bright, luminous orange. But it's, it's pretty, pretty yellow. <laughs> so that's the color scheme we have here. And there's one thing, uh, it's a secret, so don't tell anyone, but this is PLA. Um, I know I will regret it at some point, but I didn't want to buy a spool of ABS for like 150 grams of material. Um, so what I did is I basically printed everything in ABS or in black that is critical to the, um, the construction basically. Everything that's bearing load is, is all printed in ABS. Um, and then like, I mean, this is kind of like a stretch. Maybe that breaks at some point, but on the M4 extruder, I, yeah, it's easy to replace. So I'm not really concerned. Um, but on the main printer, basically the only thing that's yellow are like cable covers and stuff like that. That's the mount for the, for the, um, for the chains. So these are uh, PLA. Um, but I'm not super concerned with that. Um, but yeah, you see the rest is all all black. So this is the Y axis assembly. It's all black because this is critical to the 
to structure. Yeah, and if you look in here, there's a bit of yellow stuff, which is like the turrets. These are all the uh, This is the fans, the fan covers. Maybe I, yeah, the fan is already in here. I have that already. I just tried to fit it. Um, that is pretty much only this, the skirts. Uh, or like these excellent parts of the skirts. The rest is all black. And um, if you haven't seen it on the thumbnail, this is our stealth burner. I'm not 100% happy with it yet. Like there's a little bit of like bleeding of the black into the yellow. Um, but this was interesting because like the, the, the yellow parts fly of course, and it got completely gooey on the 100 degree C bad. <laughs> so it was a bit interesting. Um, I did uh, sand the front down to give it a bit of an interesting finish. Like it's this very smooth matte now. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm not sure if we will keep this forever, but this is like the first iteration. And this was printed on the V0 before I had uh, input shaping set up. So we have a bit of ringing going on here. <laughs> cool, but yeah, these are the printed parts. I mean... And yeah, at some point I was running out of black ABS, like for like 100 grams or something. So I printed some of the electronics uh, mounts in red ABS. Um, nobody will see that, so not concerned. Cool. So these are all our parts. Um, so technically, I guess we can get started. Um, yeah, I, I, I guess that's really all there is. Right now, I remember that I wanted to print some x-rays and I totally forgot that again. Which is amazing. I always forget to print my hex rays and it's always chaos. I will do it for next time. Cool. Uh, yeah, let's start, I guess. Let's start. Um, I'm wondering what's the best to, to start to pull apart. I mean, technically, we can start with the... With the Patent. Huh, I, I'm really not happy with the amount of light today. Really weird. It's the wrong direction. Like the image seems quite dark in my preview. So yeah, maybe let's just start to, to pull it apart here. Um, that's maybe maybe really the easiest. Also, I'm quite happy with the camera angles. I mean, it was easier with the V0 because the printer is so much smaller. And the lens of the camera is a little bit tight, I think, for this entire setup here. So maybe that's something I need to look into. Let's see. If anyone's interested, I can, I can try to find this uh, bench rod again. It was really weird. Um, oh, Bantam design. It's called Bantam design. The Bantam mount, I call it. I remember now. It was really weird because it wasn't on Thingiverse. Like you had to register on some web page to download it. And then you basically got the files via email. And it was really, really weird. I'm trying to find like a good angle, but like it's a bit to close everything. Let me quickly reposition the arm, the camera arm. One second. Okay. Yeah. I think that's, that is better, right? But it's still very, very dark. Like all the black parts are really dark. Okay. Let's pull it up. Yeah, so this, uh, one of the two Creality fans will be reused. I wonder how I should organize all the parts that I, that I pull apart. Yeah, it's also interesting. Uh, like, is it focus? 
I mean, this is really shoddy soldering. Uh, there's glue on top, so it can't touch, but like it looks really bad. And yeah, I used the PC fan connector <laughs> because I didn't have JST back then. Let's see. Bone cubot. I think the wires. Oh man, that doesn't want to come out. Hmm. Okay, let's maybe remove this one first. A bit more space. I think the wires run completely down to the electronics, um, at which point right now I would just... I mean, we can start then with the wire, like removing the wires, I guess. Let me, let me, like, yeah, I have this little, little tray. Let me just collect all the screws in here because I, I kind of want to reuse the screws. This apart. I wonder why the, why the picture is so dark. I'm not sure if it's only my preview. Okay, let's go back to this. So technically, I mean, if you press down, it should come out. But it's not budging. It's also very difficult to pull on a PTV tube <laughs> if you ever tried that. We're not using this tube again anyway, so let's be a little rough on it. Oh! Well, that was in there. Yeah, but all the cables go directly into the cable loom. Um, so we'll have to pull it completely apart. Then let's look at the real touch. Oh, I remember I used a bit of uh, thread locker here because um, I had the, the nuts come off at some point, which caused a really weird uh, behavior in, in the bad leveling, of course, because real touch was not. 100% like stable. The light bar is here in the way. <laughs> That's why it's a bit hard for me to grab that nut there in the back. See, almost out, almost out. Oh, that track 
Threadlocker is on there good. <laughs> I did not uh, not go light on that one. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Yeah, I used like uh, nuts basically to space the build touch. Uh, it's just a stack of nuts in between. But I don't think we will use this mounting hardware for the build touch again. It's most likely will work differently. Um, yeah, there's a screw down here. That is not in very good condition. So we get it out. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Here it is. With the ball head of the hex, it didn't didn't want to go out. Okay. Yep. And off it goes. Perfect. Restart. And then there's one last screw here on the side. And that's all the all the parts disassembled. Let's carefully get the wheel touch to safety. And yeah, then the hot end is still completely attached here, so we need to see how to, how to do that. Okay, I put that in on our hardware bin. Um, that also got in the hardware bin. And let's maybe quickly take this apart. Really weird construction I, I did there. It's uh, like um, some dust filter, and I printed like a very thin, very thin frame. Then I had issues that like I was touching the blade, so I added like a, a washer in, in between. <laughs> it's like really old construction. We will not need that anymore. And here's the fan. Actually, I used this like um, vibration dampening thing here. Maybe we can reuse that. That came with the fan. So let's just keep it together. Oh, I, I didn't think that through. Like we need a box to like have all the hardware we need and all the things we no longer need. And then also like a trash because this is completely gone. <laughs> okay, um, let me quickly grab like a couple of boxes so I can sort all the things. Um, otherwise, it gets way too chaotic. Oh god, I'm I'm missing everything in chat. Uh, hi, Valentin Tech. Um, hi, Gilmore. Uh, I'm also watching your Zipper Tubal as I am doing the same. I hope it's it's helpful in in your build. Um, my Ender 2 is in pieces. Oh, I didn't know you have Ender 2 with a sick tag. Um, oh, Ender 3, yeah. I mean, then you're like way ahead of me. Um, still have to like tear everything apart. Um, there will be a bit of work, especially like all the cabling. <laughs> and like, there will be a fair bit of work, I think, until we have everything like pulled apart and sorted and everything. Um, four mod kits, nice. I think that's that's a that's a good choice. Um, menu now. Definitely take a look if you haven't. Yeah, the Kirigami kit is 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 gold. Like I didn't use the non Kirigami V zero bath, um, but yeah, it's it's really solid. Like there's no problems. Like once you have a level, it just is level and you don't have to touch it anymore. So I would definitely look into the Kirigami bath. It's way better than the print alternative, I think. 
Okay, let me quickly grab some boxes so that we can get everything sorted and in order. I'm right back. So, I have some filament boxes. <laughs> let's see. So, um, let's use one as, as trash. So, that stuff goes in there. And then let's use one that also can go. Let's use one uh, part we need to keep, slash we will reuse. So this goes in there, the fan go all in there, the real touch goes in there. So these are the two boxes uh, and this one can also go in the trash. Okay. Um, I guess we can just work our way way back. So then, how to take this apart? I guess we should start from from the top. You don't want to claim the re no, I don't want to claim the thread inserts. Um, it's the cheap ones. It's not the good ones. It's it's the cheap ones. <laughs> um, not sure if you know which ones I mean. Like the Voron ones have this like um, twisted in like twisted outside basically, and these are the ones with the straight like ribbon around, um, and they are not super good. I have also like way too many. Um, maybe if I feel really bored, I take them out, but. Most likely that will be the end of, for them. <laughs> it's also the only place I think where I use thread inserts in, 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 in the entire build. So there are not too many too many in there. Um, we will keep the extruder. Um, but it won't be it won't be used for the new build. Let's see. How does it go out? Okay. We lost the spring. Yeah, this should technically come out. I wonder why this doesn't come out. I don't think there's anything stopping it. I think it's just friction. Yeah. Or maybe that doesn't come out. And it won't come out? No, it should. Okay. I'll just leave that, that thing in there. It doesn't hurt. And then there's another layer of screws. Let me see if I have a little plastic bag for this one so that we can keep all the extruder parts with each other. No, we need to take this out. There's a screw below that. Let's see. Wow. Yeah, exactly. There's another screw here. Um, I have a bunch of the cheap ones too. Don't know what I use it for now. Well. That's the thing, like I have so many of the of the good ones now that I'm not quite sure what to do with the cheap ones. I do have M4 and M5 and also M2 of the cheap ones. Uh, so that's like, there's still use case for those. But for the M3 ones, I really prefer the, the Voron ones because it's just much easier to, to put them straight into uh, into the plastic. Um, the Titan looks way better than one of my Teotonado. Uh, it's still a fake. Like, this is not a legit one. That's still like AliExpress something Titan. Um, but it, like, it, it, it worked well. Like, I never had issues with it. Um, but yeah. I mean, like, we will have, of course, M4 extruders. <laughs> there is no way around that. Uh, okay, let me see. Do I have some random bag here where I can put all the stuff? 
Let me use the. Let me use this bag. Just put that stuff in here. Because I might want to use it in the future again, but it's good to just have it all in one place. So yeah, this is the interesting part now. Um, or not? I will not do it right away, but like this is under good. So I'm not quite sure yet how to to get this off. Um, potentially we have a chance of like wedging something in here and then trying to like lever it or something. Um, but yeah, that's pretty pretty well glued on there, I think. Then so need to remove the gear, of course. See if that wants to come up. Oh no. Ooh, that's will be interesting. So basically for some reason, like, um, I mean, for some reason being like it's, it's cheap stuff, but like it doesn't grab. Um, let's see. Let's see. Where do I have here? Try a different bit. Yeah, this one grabs. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Easy. <laughs> I was already concerned. Let's just put that back in here. Oh, there are technically two. Okay, interesting. There are two grab screws, but only one was tightened. And now it's... Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, God. So this... This one didn't turn at all, and this one is now... Are you kidding me? Oh god, okay. This one, this grab screw is straight from hell. Okay, so this is our first first motor. I'll put it aside for later. We have to revisit the motors. Then let's remove that. Also, like fun story, like this part here. Um, this was printed, like when I installed the Titan Extruder, this was printed from PLA, like now it's ABS. And when I started printing the Voron parts um, in the enclosure, like basically with every print, uh, print, this like bent down more and more. At one point the motor was like, I, I, I'm not even kidding, like it was hanging in there like this. <laughs> it's just like completely like, mo like this part just melted basically. Um, yeah, so I reprinted it at some point with ABS because it was just like basically like matter of time when it would like completely fail. Nope. Did I put thread locker in there? Maybe I did. Yeah, I did. Ah. Well, another one of those. Let's see if we have more luck with. Nope. This screw is gone. Okay, let's see. Can we? Yes, I need a second pair of, of pliers for that one. Otherwise, that's 
And technically we can leave it. Technically we can leave it, but yeah, let's leave it for now. We will come back to it later. <laughs> then let's unplug that motor here. And then I guess this entire wire loom. Maybe let's quickly check that first. Let's unplug that so we have that out of the way. So that would be... Yeah, let's just unplug everything. Let's see what comes out. This cable should be loose. Exactly. And... This one... So... Let's quickly loosen those. That's again way too bright. Something is off with my lighting today. Something like that? Yeah, that should work. So... Okay, so that one is the the bat, the thermistor, and the two heating wires. <sighs> like looking at this, this will be so much work to put back together. But then I'm not even putting it back together. I change everything. <laughs> um, yeah, we have like I'll just keep this entire like wire loom like in one piece right now, uh, and then later we need to like. I mean, most likely we'll just cut the wires because we, we won't need those wires again. Uh, and those that are directly going to the thermistor and the heater block, they will need to be shortened anyways because we have the tool head PCB on the south burner. So yeah, I'm not going to bother with that right now. I'll just put that to the side. And we have a bunch of random wires, which I can also just throw into the trash bin. I will recycle the JST connectors, <laughs> um, but uh, the rest of the cables most likely will just go to the trash. Um, okay, then maybe let's try to get this electronics thing apart. Um, that's like coming still from the original Ender. For some reason I used the XT60 connector to connect it. Um, then these two are the LEDs. So you see they go in here. Let's just unscrew that. And then maybe when it comes out, it should all be detached. Um, also leave this like in one piece for now. Um, yeah, let's leave that in one piece for now as one unit, but we will reuse basically the parts mostly. Um, I guess then the power supply is now a low hanging fruit. I mean, now it's coming apart quite quick. Yeah, there are like the screws in front. There's one here and then there's one here. Oh, there. <laughs> uh, let me see. Most likely, no. Sorry for the bad camera angle. There we have our power supply. 
maybe if I have the camera somewhere up here, that would would work well. Power supply with the cables. Um, we also can pull off the cover here. No. Every screw has a different size. Just to annoy me. Pull that off. Um, we will reuse the power inlet. This will be also part of the new build. So another one. Okay, two more on the back. We very thoroughly attached that. Hey. Yeah, now it comes apart. So the power inlet will be reused and then um yeah, this will be of course populated differently. But yeah, we will of course reuse the power supply. In case that was not clear. <laughs> Let's put it also in our like reuse basket. Then Let's pull off the screen. Um, the screen will not be reused. Technically, you could reuse the screen, of course. Um, I think the um, Ender to Switch Wire repository also has a like screen mount for the original Ender screen. Um, but mine will be headless. Um, I am, yeah. I I'm considering adding uh, adding um, uh, the Big Tree Tech. Uh, Nomi, Nomi, like the, the stealth burner screen. Uh, just to have like a progress um, display. But yeah, I'm not really using the screen and I'm not a big fan of how Clipper handles the screen. Um, not, gonna, not gonna trash that, um, but yeah, won't be, won't be real. Then this cable, oh yeah, I, I Add clips down here. Let's see how we get rid of those. Um, then I guess we can also now remove the LED. Getting really light. <laughs> it's very easy to, to move it around now. So ah, there's another clip. Okay, we need to we need to take care of those clips. So, um, you see there are like those clips here, like it's all black, which doesn't really help with the lighting. Let's see, did I get them out? Yeah. Oh, well, that's also a solution, right? We can just <laughs> slide them off. And this. Oh, this cable is connected to the other one. Let's slide it off as well. So we don't need the clip. We don't need the display cable. And then... We have another LD. I don't know, the camera this time? Huh. One second. Why does the camera disconnect? Oh no. Uh, I like Nomi. I feel working on changing the colors of all the GIF animations. Oh yeah, true. Like you, you built one, right? Or like you added one to your build. Um, I'm really looking into that, but I tried to like keep the, um, one second, uh, I, I tried to keep the price low or like the cost low for this build. Yeah, for some reason the, the video is gone. I'm not sure about what's going on here. 
I mean, wouldn't wouldn't be a good stream without some technical issues, right? Let's see, Let's do this that works. And then if I switch to the camera, it's just black. That's weird. Let me try to plug that in differently without destroying everything. <laughs> um, well, Yeah, if I plug it in again. I mean, everything else works, right? Like, yeah, I have a microphone. I have this camera. Well, I'm not sure what happens if I unplug this one. to unpack this. Now if everything dies, then everything... Okay, microphone is back. Cool. Oh, it's just like... Try to restart the camera. Sorry for that. I'm sure if it's an OBS issue or whether it's a... Okay, now it's completely destroyed. <laughs> Well, because now this is my, my, my webcam. Um, cool. I wonder what's going on right now. I have no clue what's going on. That's not quite correct. work again maybe yes okay now the one one is working um uh Kali, give me give me a second i'm getting getting back to you i'm trying to to fix this mess like if i wouldn't know better i think that the capture card just died um then i would say let's bypass the capture card You're in for some live troubleshooting. Um, that's a bit annoying. 
And, well, no, no, the camera died again. Well, that was a sh I, I used to set up now for like multiple streams and never had issues like that. Uh, yeah, I tried deactivating it in, in OBS Six Pack. I, I tried to switch it to a different camera and switch it back, but for some reason, it doesn't want to anymore. Um, let's see. Um, so now, for some reason, like the front camera is also cracking out. Okay. Well, I'm really not sure if it's an OBS issue right now. But I'm not sure if I can restart OBS during a stream. Because right now, like, no camera works whatsoever. So this is the only camera that works. That's my webcam of my of my uh, laptop. <laughs> what if I switch to? This one? It doesn't connect. Let me try something else. Uh, yeah, they're all going through USB, but through different ports. I don't, that was never an issue for some reason. Um, I'm now not going through USB. Yes. So this one is... I think the USB might be the issue here, because I have a USB hub connected. And I think maybe this one crept out. I'm not sure. Now this is via Wi-Fi. <laughs> so that will be interesting. Um, let me disconnect the USB hub. Um, let me disconnect the USB hub. but it, it worked like fine for the longest time um, and it's a USB 3 USB hub and all the cameras are USB 2 uh, so that should be technically fine um, let's try the camera I just did the camera again No, that's that's not not working. Um But now I think also my OBS setup is completely messed up because now it's not really doing what I wanted to do. Um, uh, the, the, uh, Collie, your question. What's the other camera like? How it follows? Uh, just so I can know. This is my iPhone. Um, and I, uh, Apple added this like feature that you can use your iPhone camera on your Mac. Um, I only have one camera, which is this one here. And um, yeah, I just use my iPhone for that one because it's not too important how I look. <laughs> like this is what I'm doing here is more important. That's why I use my proper camera for that one. Um, if it works, that's always the, the main problem. Um, so here's what we can do. Um, 
what we can do is the microphone. Let me see. Let me do that. I have one long USB-C cable. I have to change some stuff around. One second. Okay, so now we have a free long USB-C cable. Let's use this free long USB-C cable. <laughs> um, and connect directly to the camera via USB-C. Okay, and now OBS should, sorry for this. I think something is off with the USB, with the USB hub. Like any device goes and OBS crashed. Yep. It's it's only getting worse from here on, I think. So I'm not sure if I'm not streaming or not. Yeah, I think you have like uh, one minute if OBS crashes um, until YouTube cancels the stream. Yeah, to be honest, like I'm not quite sure what to do right now. Um, it's also like with the USB-C cable, it's not picking up the camera. I try reconnecting that. But it might be a very unglory, unglorious end for the stream. I'm not sure if I need to restart my, my machine or something. Yeah, so um, OBS keeps crashing, <laughs> which is not very helpful. Um, yeah, I guess that is where we have to end today. Um, I'm kind of out of ideas. Like this is the exact same setup as I was using for the last three streams, I think. I didn't change anything. Um, and now like the, the things like this camera does not come up whatsoever. And if I unplug and replug it, OBS crashes. But I also was using this camera with this like USB setup before. Like, that's not something that I now, like, try for the first time. And OBS was always super happy with that. Let's try one last time. If OBS crashes now, I'm sorry. Didn't crash yet. Yeah, it's also not, yeah. Okay, um, guys, sorry. Um, uh, this is the Mac, yeah, it's it's a Mac. Uh, I'm not sure how to reinitialize a USB controller. Um, 
what I would do usually now is like to restart the machine, but then I guess the stream would be would be over because it takes me most likely longer. Um, yeah, I, I guess that would be it for today. Like, I want to finish the disassembly. I mean, we are kind of there. Ah, this is annoying. I'm really annoyed. Like, I actually prepared those little, like, uh, pulley pullers <laughs> to pull up the press pulleys. I was really curious to try that out. Uh, but I guess we have to wait till next time. Um, well, yeah. I guess that's it. I'm not quite sure what broke now. And I'm not quite... The, the, the bad part about that is I'm not sure what the cause is. So I'm not sure what I need to fix so that it doesn't happen again. Um, yeah, Alex, next time will be more fun. Hopefully. Let me see what I can do here. Um, something is clearly not, not working. Cool. Okay, then. Um, yeah, thanks for, for being here. And um, sorry for the, for the troubleshooting. Maybe it's also like a stream we can do, like uh, troubleshooting OBS. Um, yeah, well, too bad. Cool, yeah, the next time we will continue this assembly. Um, I'm really curious to pull off those pulleys from the motors because they're pressed on my ender. Um, then we'll have to take off the X carriage here. Um, yeah. But well, I guess at least my electronics are out. There are no more cables here. So it's, it's on success. Cool, then, thanks for being here and see you next time. <laughs> Bye.